The most important thing to know when casting a large number of a part is whether the part in question is even worth making in the first place. To find that out, you of course need a prototype of some sort. Typically compressor housings are cast, even the prototypes usually are, but I needed a functional part to pull data from, and casting just a few units just for testing would have been ridiculously expensive, since casting is meant for larger production numbers, like 50 or 100. So you don't want to make 50 or 100 defects if you're just trying out a new concept, so I needed something 3D printed, but the problem with that is it was expensive. But after adjusting my expectations, the cost of SLM 3D printing started to seem a lot more reasonable for what it is. So this is an SLM 3D printed or additive manufactured aluminum turbo compressor housing. If you don't know how these are made, basically it's a powder bed, picture like a bed of sand, which is actually aluminum dust. And then there's a laser that comes in and burns all of it together. So SLM stands for selective laser melting. You can find a lot of information about this online. So it melts in a layer and then an arm comes across, sweeps the sand away, puts a new layer, the part drops down a little bit, and then it welds it again. So that keeps on happening until this part is built up from the plate up. And then obviously it needs supports, all sorts of stuff to keep the overhangs from being de defective essentially. And then basically that runs for many hours and then you have your part. So the reason why this is so cool is that this is one of the few compressor housings that actually exist in the world that are 3D printed. So Formula One actually makes them this way. They, they use all the capability of 3D printing. They use some weird shaped outlets. They actually have two outlets on the compressor housing because they have a hot V set up on those cars. And I don't know what other crazy stuff they have going on, but Basically, they only need one turbo per car. Each car has some slightly different setup, I'd assume. So it makes more sense for them to 3D print it. Uh, so F1 makes it this way. Uh, maybe some other turbo manufacturers make it this way. Just for prototypes. I'm not actually sure because no one's really vocal about that. But I actually went ahead and did this. So I figured why not share it. It's There's nothing really to hide here. This is actually just... It looks like a cast part, to be honest, except the method of manufacturing was anything but typical. I really didn't believe the quality of SLM could be this good. It does, it, again, it does look like a cast part. Uh, it looks like a cast part with very good finish, by the way. Usually it's a lot more rough on the inside and deep inside the, the volume on these housings. Usually it's a lot rougher than this, so, you know, smoother's good for better airflow. Um, this was polished a little bit, just to remove the supports. Upon machining, my machinists were noting that this machine's a bit different from uh, cast. You can tell that the material itself was stronger just by the chips that were coming off of it. Uh, castings usually have small areas of porosity inside them uh, that you can't really get rid of. Even a really refined part might still have a little bit. So since this is welded from basically the ground up, from uh, powdered aluminum, you don't really have any porosity. So the result is this feels fairly dense compared to other compressor housings I've dealt with. That just might be me saying that, but it feels very strong. This is actually one of the lightest housings I've ever done. This actually weighs eight, as it is, as it's machined right now, this actually weighs 884 grams. The only real giveaways on this part that it's not cast is the absence of the mold split lines, which are the, it's the line between the two halves of the mold when these are cast. This part looks so passable as cast and it looks so normal, pretty much because I exercised 0% of the extra design freedom you get by SLM printing. This part was actually designed to be casted. Uh, everything is drafted, even the letters are drafted slightly uh, for mold release purposes and casting. Um, you don't need that in 3D printing, you could just have negative draft, you could do whatever, you can put some weird shapes, I could have curved this outlet a bit or something, or made it not round, I could have done all sorts of stuff to this part, but again, this was just the first one. Um, this one doesn't actually have a shaft speed sensor because of what I'm running it on, but 
Again, future designs I could do that, but in the final cast part, I'll end up having a shaft speed sensor. Material integrity seems to be really good. Uh, based on the print resolution and the material properties of Al Psi 10 MG, or just the, the standard grade 3D printed aluminum, uh, it actually has higher tensile strength than A356, even when A356 is heat treated. With that said, you might see RHB making some of these for customers in the future who absolutely need a fully bespoke motorsports turbo. Uh, because we can also print turbine housings out of stainless steel too, and we have a small portfolio of center section designs, bearing designs, etc., we, we can actually pull off making some bespoke stuff for the people who really need them, which is a great thing, because that's something you can only do in modern times. So speaking of motorsport, you're probably wondering why the inlet design looks different from the typical. Uh, that's because this housing is designed to accommodate a restrictor on the compressor inlet, Say it could be like a 40 mil restrictor or something like, you know, rally racing runs restrictors, some different types of racing run restrictors for power limitation. Um, so it's nice to have the provisions for it. So you can actually just bolt one on with a nice O-ring seal and everything and get it done rather than buying something off the shelf and then you have to machine it, press something in or do whatever, right? So having this is just better for motorsport. This housing is also designed to be as slim and as light as possible too. Um, obviously you don't want a heavy old part on a race car. Um, this particular housing is actually machined out for the Super 6 center section. Uh, this is what I run on the race car and many other customers run. This is the same as what you get on their products from the site, except this compressor housing, this new 3D printed one is 70 AR instead of 60 AR. That brings the rated horsepower of Super 6 up from 700 to, I don't know how much exactly. That's the beauty of having this prototype so we can actually test that. Um, on the race car, well run well into the 700 horsepower range, but we'll see what we can do with this. I have no doubts that this will pass a burst test since the wall thickness is fairly standard and the material is significantly stronger than cast. And to add to that, billet compressed wheel failures are extremely uncommon. But as a turbo manufacturer, we still need to test that scenario regardless. So when we do end up doing the burst test anyhow, you'll end up seeing it on the YouTube channel too. So what started out as a quick way to get a prototype, hence the name rapid prototyping, I guess, turned into a realization that this is the best way to make a bespoke motorsports turbocharger, provided it's worth the money to the end user. And I guess there's a reason why they make them like this in Formula One. So this will go on the race car fairly soon. And uh, we'll be making more cool stuff, more 3D printed stuff, billet turbo goodness, and all sorts of stuff at RHB. So stay tuned if you're into that kind of stuff.